The day began like any other day, looking through my cookbook for something different to make. I came across Danish, the art of making Danish. I thought I would give that a go today, because after all, look at the beautiful results you can attain if you have a little bit of patience and you enjoy the journey just as much as you do the final destination. <laughs> After deciding what I wanted to make and how I was going to create this Danish, the journey began with some warm milk dissolving my yeast and waiting a few minutes, at least five, to see it activate and bubble. So. I covered it over after mixing it up gently and let it activate for five minutes. My journey was about to begin and I knew it was going to take some time, but most of the time when you're making a Danish dough is after you've rolled it out, you wrap it up and you wait an hour as it sits in the fridge chilling. So I added my ingredients, which will be in the description box below, for half a recipe for this Danish. All you will need to do if you want to make a full recipe is double it. I do like to sift my flour through a sieve. Just to, It makes it so much easier. It might seem like a useless step to most people, but makes it easier when you're trying to combine the wet ingredients with the flour. I removed my butter from the refrigerator to let it become room temperature. You will mix your butter in with your flour until you arrive at a coarse consistency. So I put my dough hook attachment to my mixer but you can do this by hand. You can use a pastry blender, you can use your fingers, you can use even a fork to mix the butter in. Next, the yeast mixture with the warm milk goes into the mixer to incorporate that for a couple of minutes. Half of the recipe called for one egg but for some reason I cracked two eggs and put them in there so later on I had to adjust with another one quarter cup of flour. <laughs> it is however if you're new to baking or creating dough very dangerous to alter from a recipe or alter from if you've divided your recipe in half. You pretty much have to know what that dough is supposed to look like. As you can see, it was dripping off the... Whoa, yes. Keep it on very low speed if you're using a mixer to add more flour. But no, you have to be... You have to know what your dough is supposed to look like. I've made dough for many years, so I felt okay with adding that extra egg because the extra fluid liquids will add... Well, you need more flour to your mixture. This is pretty much what I was looking for, for my Danish dough, which is not your bread dough, right? It's not your white bread dough that you would make. This is a Danish dough. It is wetter in appearance, but it comes away still from the side of the mixing bowl. Dust your surface with a little bit of flour and the top of your dough. And shortly it's time to roll out into a long rectangular shape. You'll want around 10 inches wide by 18 inches long. That is your goal for rolling out this Danish pastry dough. So I mix it in so it's no longer sticky but I have to be careful not to add too much extra dough. I sort of, you go on feel here, folks. I can't tell you exactly how much to add while you're rolling, but you'll get the idea when it's no longer sticking to your hands or fingers and it's not gumming up your counter, then you know you have enough flour. 
So you just very slowly keep adding a little bit of flowers you see that I'm doing there to your dough as you're working it. You do not want to overwork your dough either. So this is not a 10 minute thing. So as it need it for a few minutes until it's no longer sticking to my hands. Once your dough is in a nice round shape, you'll want to cover it completely with a piece of plastic wrap. You don't want any air getting to this dough ball. Your Danish has begun and so has your journey. And if you take this knowing what a Danish in your mind is going to taste like, this journey is worth the effort and the time it's going to take, but it's not a difficult chore. So I've wrapped it up in the plastic wrap, or you could probably put it in a bowl and cover it very well, but it needs to be completely covered. So plastic wrap, you want to put it in your refrigerator set your timer for two hours or you can leave it overnight and do the next step the next day if you prefer but two hours then you will bring out your dough and you will lightly flour your countertop and put a little bit of flour in the palm of your hand to dust your rolling pin and then roll it out to 10 inches wide by 18 inches long. Now there is a reason for this. So get out your your measuring tape or your ruler stick. Once you have achieved that, you want to cube your butter into little cubes and place it, leaving one or one third of your dough with no butter. You will see what I mean. Because you want to fold this and you want the end flap to not have the butter squares on it. Now, there is a possibility to make an easier step here. You could buy Pillsbury Crescent Roll and open that up and roll it together so there's no separation in the dough. And you can do the steps from this point forward now just know it's not going to taste like a Danish. It's going to taste like a crescent roll. I've never done it this way, but I have seen it on the internet being done that way. I might give it a try just out of curiosity to see how the two, the original Danish tastes. Well, you know there's no comparison. There should have been cardamom, ground cardamom in my recipe but I didn't have any ground cardamom in my spice cabinet, so I had to omit that step. But my Danish tasted really good. I was gonna add the cheese, a, a dollop of the cheese, and then the filling, but I didn't have that either. As you can see, I folded the dough, and now we're gonna need to wrap this at this shape into back into the saran the plastic wrap that you had before now you want to pay attention to what direction the fold is just like an envelope where's the flap of the envelope on the dough because when you take it out of your refrigerator because it's going to sit there for an hour you want to pay attention now on that first fold, I will again roll this out 10 inches wide, 18 inches long to incorporate the butter I've just added into the dough. I will take a measurement to see how far I've gone and then I will brush off before I make the fold any of the extra flour that is on there. Try to get my edges even, but it's not overly important, and that didn't bother me. So I will wrap it up and I will mark it with a number one and pay attention to where that flap was, just like on an envelope, because you'll want to reverse 
the rollout the next time. You will roll it out two more times after this. Number one is done. And I go put it into my refrigerator for one hour or overnight if you can't do any more than that. And then number two rollout is coming because it's already sat in my refrigerator for an hour. So I will roll it out two more times, marking and turning my dough each time. Number one, I will see where my flap was. I will turn it the opposite direction. There's the flap. I want to turn it that way. And then I will roll it out and I will have another flap and on the third turn I will do the same thing as I've done here. So I will continue to roll this out 10 inches wide roughly by 18 inches long. Wrap it back up. So the dough has chilled after the first roll out for one hour. I've rolled it out a second time and now it needs to chill for one hour and I will mark it to make sure to keep track of what I'm doing and it also shows me where the fold is to pay attention when I remove it out of the fridge that I'll need to turn it again. So number two goes in for one hour. Now it's time for the third and final roll. Let's roll with this journey into making Danish. Believe me folks, this is well worth the effort. So I'll lightly flour my surface and roll out this beautiful looking Danish pastry dough. I do hope that everyone, at least once in their lifetime, gives this a try and not be afraid of it because it seems when you're looking at it in the cookbook and if you've ever done that and you're reading the description it's not as difficult as it sounds there are some you know there are steps that you must follow to have a nice journey and when you arrive at your destination of that beautiful Danish whatever you decide to put for filling is well worth the effort so now I'm going to take a pizza cutter and I'm going to cut strips out of the Danish dough that I've rolled to the same dimensions roughly. But what I've done is I've halved it. I've cut the dough in half. So now I will make the strips and you'll see what I'm doing with that next. So just, I mean, they can be you can use a ruler if you like but I couldn't be bothered so I just made the because it really doesn't matter if it's that straight <laughs> I mean really folks if you've gone this far in making your own Danish this is fine so now that my strips are cut out one at the end on the right a little wonky but that's okay too you can work with it it's dough, remember? So you will take it and you will twist to the left with one hand and counterclockwise and clockwise with the other hand. And you want to have a ribbon. And then you'll take that ribbon and you'll just roll it onto itself very lightly, not squeezing it together or anything. And then you want to pinch the end, almost like making a rosette. So you'll continue that with the rest of your strips and then you will place that on a cookie sheet that has parchment paper on it. You will want to let that rest until your dough doubles in size. Roughly depends on the temperature of your kitchen actually. If it's warm it'll take anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes to double in size. But just cover it with plastic wrap after you've done that and then cover it with a towel and just keep it warm and let it double in size. Once it's doubled in size, I will want to make an indentation 
in the center of my rosettes. So I'll just take a spoon, nothing sticks to it, and I'll just make a little well in the center because this is where I'm going to put my pre-made pie filling into. I bought yesterday a can of apple pie filling and cherry pie filling because I thought I wanted half and half. Half for the danishes that I'll make are apple, the other half are cherry. So you just go along and you press a well into the dough that will hold your pie filling. This journey has been very interesting and, well, let's say calming for me. If you have any stress in your day, this will, I mean, you have to concentrate on what you're doing here. The stress just melts away. So now I have one egg and a little bit of water mixture I whipped up, and you want to lightly, folks, brush this on the outside of your dough, of your Danish rounds. Now there are many different ways of cutting out your Danish dough once your dough is completed. You can make squares, you can make turnovers, and you can make all kinds of shapes. But for this, this is the way I wanted to make my Danishes. I did debate on making a few turnovers and a few stars and then I went, no, let's just do this and be happy. <laughs> which I was very delighted with this journey into making Danish. Taking a tablespoon, I scooped up a little bit of the apple pie filling and placed it into the center of each Danish. Oh, this was, this journey was almost coming to an end, and it was almost time to bake up these beauties, but there's one other step beyond this, sprinkling it with a little bit of sugar around the edges. Now, I liked, when I need to sprinkle sugar, I like to take an empty salt shaker and mark it well <laughs> that it's sugar in there not salt and I like to sprinkle my sugar that way if I were to use a spoon or just my fingers which I typically used to do I would have sugar everywhere it would be all over the burning on to the parchment paper so using a salt shaker that's clearly marked sugar on the outside to sprinkle on the sugar is so much easier and less messy and you don't waste the sugar. The second half of the pastry dough I did the same way and this time I was going to use cherry pie filling. Believe me, it was hard to decide which one I liked better, the cherry or the apple. And I must admit, I enjoy both equally. Once everything is filled, your Danish will go into a preheated 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for roughly 15 to 20 minutes. During the first half of the cooking time, you will want to rotate your pan halfway to get even baking on your rounds of Danish pastries. I must say that this was a very enjoyable time that I spent in my kitchen creating what I call a journey into making Danish because it is a journey folks you have to spend a little bit of time and a lot of wait time <laughs> where you could do other things you could go watch videos while you're waiting I that's what I did yesterday I put it in the refrigerator in the hour wait time I went and I watched you guys in all of your wonderful videos so I want to thank each and every one 
for sticking with me to this point in this video. I used powdered sugar, a little vanilla extract, and um, milk, mixed it together and put it in a squeeze bottle to do the final step once they had begun to cool. You don't want to do this when they're right out of the oven because it will melt right off. But I sp sprinkled the powdered sugar icing over the top and that was the finale and it was time to have a taste oh my goodness the first bite and you say to yourself why haven't I done this before oh look at that icing just dripping off oh is your mouth watering yet <laughs> now moderation is wise for eating these they're very lovely for the holidays for your Thanksgiving table your Christmas table someone's birthday if you don't want to make a cake a typical cake make them Danish pastry you will wow them you can even keep them together like they are right here put them on a beautiful plate and in between each Danish you could put candles. There are many different occasions you can use these for. Or if you just want to relieve a little stress and get your mind on something else, get in the kitchen and start making some Danish and enjoy your journey. It is a journey. It is a pastry. It is a delicacy. It isn't just a cake it isn't just a biscuit or a loaf of bread it is a pastry and i can tell you it is a wonderful journey